Yeah, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. So, hello everyone, my name is Bruno Frischa, and I will present you the project called Markpad, Augmenting Touchpads for Common Selection. Uh, I have been working on that project with Olivier Chapuis and Eric Le Collina. So for this project, we wanted to provide users a fast interaction technique to perform repeated actions on their laptop. But what kind of actions do they perform? They can, for example, open applications, hide them, switch between applications. They can also trigger commands inside these applications. They can open files, folders, web pages, and also navigate, visualize, and edit data. And to do that, they use various interactions. They may use, for example, buttons to open applications, or even navigate the web using bookmarks. They may, using the same modality, trigger application commands, or they can change the modality to go faster using hotkeys. And finally, they may use gestures, usual one like these ones, to scroll, zoom, etc. Or also use marking menus gestures, so directional gestures to trigger commands. So what is the problem here? The problem is that users have to perform many actions and they have various ways to interact. So the question we have is how to perform many actions quickly using only one technique. So for that, we propose to use gestures and a lot of gestures. So Mockbound is about allowing users to perform many actions using only single strokes on the touchpad. So this is different from, from the marking menus that use a hierarchy to perform many gestures. It does not conflict with pointing on a touchpad, even though we don't use any modes and we use only one finger. So you don't have to press a key to perform a gesture. And finally, we also propose a novice mode. We provide a novice mode and an expert mode so users can learn the strokes and then perform them faster. So first, let me show you a quick overview of Markpad. So what you can see here is the user fixing some passive marks on a touchpad to help him and to guide him performing the stroke. And then you can enable a novice mode to show, to display the strokes on the screen, or use an expert mode to perform the strokes faster and trigger the actions faster. Finally, he can also customize strokes and actions to adapt to his needs. I will go back on everything. So how do we not conflict with pointing on a touchpad? So for that, a technique has been proposed in the literature for mobile devices, which is called the bezel menus. The idea is to start a gesture from the bezel of the interactive surface and then perform a gesture. But the problem here is the limited number of commands you can perform with that. So to increase that number, what we propose is to use the distance in that design. So using the same interaction technique, the user have the have the possibility to stop at different distances, different ending areas. So using one direction, the user can perform several gestures using different distances. Let me show you concretely how it looks like. So if the user press a starting area of several strokes for a short delay, the strokes will be displayed on the, on the entire screen. He can then slide to an ending area then lift his finger to trigger a command. Here the commands may be, for example, to open an application, to trigger a hotkey, or to open a bookmark using the same direction and the same starting area. Now, if the user knows the strokes, he can perform them faster, and they won't be displayed anymore on the screen. So this is the expert mode here. Let me now detail a bit more about the design of Markpan. So the idea is that strokes have to start from the borders of the touchpad, and a stroke is just defined by a starting area and an ending area. Several starting areas can be defined, and in fact, several ending areas can be defined also for one starting area, which means that we can have gestural menus. So from a starting area, several strokes can be defined, and then the user can perform them like this. And finally, the user can customize his own areas, starting and ending areas, the positions, and the size of the areas. And perform the same interaction. Now, you may wonder, OK, we have this, but how can we have a lot of gestures? Well, for that, we propose to use pad marks, which, has, which are passive marks on a touchpad. 
so it can guide the user to perform a lot of gestures. We use two types of pan marks. First, visual pan marks, so that the user can only see on the touchpad, or visual tactile pan marks, that the user can feel on the touchpad, so you can have a, f a tactile feedback. Again, a concrete example, so the user can just attach pad marks very quickly on the touchpad and then perform a gesture seamlessly. This is Markpad, and we wanted to evaluate that. And for that, we had two main questions. First, does it work? Can users be accurate enough to perform the strokes? And secondly, do users need to be guided or not? Do we need the pad marks on the touchpad? So for the first question, we performed a lab experiment, and for that, we put ourselves in an extreme case. We split the touchpad in a grid of seven by five areas, so the user could perform a maximum of 680 possible gestures. The idea is to go that far to see if our design could work, and in fact, at the end, the user could choose to customize and to use whatever strokes he needs. The task was just to reproduce a stroke, so it was shown to him where he should start and where he should end, and we used three different conditions. First, only using only visual pad marks on the touchpad, a second condition with visual tactile pad marks, and finally, as the tactile feedback can be disturbing when the user is just pointing on the touchpad, we used a third condition, which is a mixed condition, with visual tactile pad marks on the border and visual pad marks at the center of the touchpad. So this is what the experimental setup looked like. The user could see on the screen a stimulus showing him what the stroke he had to perform. Then he had to perform the stroke on the touchpad directly. And finally, we also used a gaze tracking device to see if the users looked more usually using visual pan marks than visual tactile pan marks. And the results for that is that first, for the success rates for all conditions, we had a success rate of about 95%. So this works. Even though we used an extreme case and we had a lot of possible strokes, this can be used and users were accurate enough. Now, we did not find better accuracy using visual tactile pan marks than visual pan marks, even though they had to look a bit more at the touchpad using visual pan marks. And finally, about the execution times, they were between 0 0.8 and 1.2 seconds for short, for short strokes and long strokes, whatever the condition. So the results are that it works. Now, the second question again, do users need to be guided or not? Do we, do we need the pan marks? So for that, we performed the second lab experiment using the same experimental design but different conditions. A first condition to see if we could reproduce the results from the first experiment, then two conditions using only pad marks on the border of the touchpad, and even though there were, there were less marks, the strokes to do, the strokes to perform were exactly the same. And finally, a last condition without pad marks at all on the touchpad, so usual touchpad, in fact. And for that, we found that for the first condition, we could reproduce the results from the first experiments. And the, second, the two second conditions, uh, the, the conditions with pad marks only on the border, it was about 90%. And finally, without pad marks, it was about 72%. So main results is that pad marks are useful in that condition again, with a lot of possible gestures. Users need the marks to be guided. Now, if we look a bit more into the details of that experiment and of the results, if we look only at strokes ending in the center of the touchpad, we can see that without the pad marks in the center, the success, rate, the success rates are a bit lower. But still, a solution for that is to use larger areas in the center so the user can still be accurate without the need of pad marks to guide them. OK, so these are the two lab experiments that show that our concept can be used using a guide. Now, a question remains, that is, will all design, our technique conflict with pointing interaction on the touchpad. And for that, we performed a data collection study in the wild to assess that. So we recorded the interaction of 12 users over one week. So we gathered about 1.5 million gestures. And the thing is that users were not aware of the technique, and they did not use palm marks on the touchpad. So we just wanted to see 
where they, where they point in the touch pan and it, all design, all technique will be um, a problem to use a long pointing. So what we did is that we run our recognizer with different values of the border width. Because if the user just points on the touch pan, this will be usual pointing interaction. But if the border width is a bit bigger, then the same interaction we would be recognized as a mark pad stroke. So that would be a false positive. That would be an involuntary activation. So from that, our analysis showed that the border width should be between 5 and 10 millimeters. And also, we showed that the minimal length of the strokes is a factor that has to be taken into account, and that should be around 5 millimeters. So using these parameters, we had a rate of po false positives detected between 0 0.86 and 2.2%. You can see more details in the paper about that study. So now let me show you a bit more about the prototype we built for Markpad, and that is working, in fact. So again, the user can just perform a stroke easily using the pad marks, and he can display the strokes using a novice mode. So if he press uh, the starting area of strokes for a short delay, the strokes will be displayed on the entire screen. So the thing is, I did not mention, is that the touchpad is mapped to the entire screen of the computer. But if he knows the strokes again, he can perform them faster, and they won't be displayed anymore on the screen. This is the expert mode. Now, the main feature of that prototype is its customization feature, because users can customize the pad marks in the touchpad using, for example, different materials. What we use for the experiment is really cheap materials. It's just sheets, plastic sheets, paper, or even, as you can see, uh, tape at the bottom left that is almost invisible on the touchpad. Our users could even use colors to help, to help them memorize the strokes and the commands. Not only they can customize that, but they can also customize the strokes and the actions to perform. So what you can see here is the editor of the Markpad prototype. And you can see four starting areas, so four gestural menus. If the user wants to create a new stroke, he just has to uh, drag and drop from the starting area to the place he wants to finish the stroke, then define the action that will be triggered. For example, here the user just wants to trigger an action that will quit the current application. And then the stroke can be performed as it is defined. What are the commands that users can trigger using Magpan? Well, they can trigger a lot of things. They can open, switch between applications, trigger hotkeys, open bookmarks. And the thing is, they can also run scripts, Apple scripts on my computer. But with this means that if the user can program his action, he can do whatever he needs. Markpad will be able to trigger the action anyway. Now, I would like to show you um, the use of two users and to compare them to see what are the differences in the customizations. So the two users were two authors of the paper, and they used this prototype for a year now. So for the first user, for example, he used tape on his touchpad, again, which is almost invisible, so it doesn't uh, disturb the user. And his interface looked like this. So as you can see, the starting areas were mostly at the top of the touchpad. Now, if we look at one of the menu, we find something that we saw in the lab experiments, which is that, well, first, the ending areas have different sizes, but also in the center of the touchpad, ending areas are a bit bigger to be accurate enough. Now, if we look at the second user, the pad marks used on the touchpad were a bit different. They were, uh, he used a bit, a bit more pad marks on the touchpad and he used different materials, which is here, paper stickers. If we look at his interface, the starting areas were mostly at the bottom left. So this is to adapt to his needs and to his use of the touchpad. And for example, one of the menu he used was to uh, control the Keynote application to do some actions, open the good documents, and um, perform actions with this application. So to conclude on that project, Markpan allows users to perform many actions using only single strokes on the touchpad. 
it does not conflict with pointing, as we saw with our data study. And we provide a novice mode and an expert mode, so users can learn the strokes and then perform them faster, so they won't need to be displayed anymore on the screen. Now, what are the perspectives of that project? We would like to use active tactile feedback on a touchpad, so not using pad marks anymore, but have a dynamic feedback. So depending on where the user selects something, then some vibration could be triggered to give him the tactile feedback. We would also like to adapt this design to mobile devices, which can be challenging, in fact, because on the touchpad, nothing is displayed. But on a mobile device, information will be displayed. So we cannot use pad marks as it is right now, but maybe, in fact, tactile feedback. And finally, we would like to evaluate the memorization of mappings between command and stroke to see if, uh, when users customize their own mappings, they will memorize them better or not. And finally, I would like to, well, to tell you that you can, in fact, use this application. If you go to this link, you can try it by yourself. You just, have, you just need a Mac computer, but yeah, try it, see if you like it, and, uh, and give feedback. Thank you. Time for a few questions if anyone wants to have the microphone. Um, I can start by asking about your just excellent work, by the way. Um, I noticed that you always do, um, I want to call them linear gestures along one axis. Did you investigate at all the possibility to um, uh, somewhat mimic um, how you do folder sub folder navigation within a hierarchical menu? So, say you do a gesture on the x axis. Um, and you follow up that gesture on the y-axis, for instance? Um, yeah, we could. Definitely, we could go through areas. And as you go through an area, you go through a, a, a hierarchy. But the point is to just lay down everything and to only have one level. So as we saw, we can have a lot of possible gestures on only one level. Mm -hmm. And we think that for memorization, this could be a good point. Because for spatial memorization, then the items will just be laid down and they won't overlap. Nobody has any other questions, yeah. I'll ask another one. Um, did you notice any disadvantage of adding a layer of tactile markers on top of a trackpad for, say, dragging gestures, swiping gestures, uh, and whatnot? So for the, for the gestures that the us user would commonly perform? Um, um, yes and no, because since they are on the borders, usually you, can, you don't touch them. When you use the scroll interaction, for example, you stay at the center of the touchpad. And uh, well, one of the things is that, for example, if you want to remove the pad marks quickly, you have to use, well, we use the plastic layer underneath. So this can be a bit different than the usual texture of the touchpad. So this is something that at the beginning is a bit uh, disturbing. But then you get used to it, and that's OK. This was really interesting work. Thank you. So I happen to work for a company that makes laptops. So all sorts of interesting things <laughs> occur to me with, with your work. I'm wondering, uh, so there is the possibility of building it into the actual uh, trackpad instead of you know, having to use layers on top. And I'm wondering if, uh, if, if you have any thoughts around its utility for things outside the sort of user, usual user experience. For instance, can we get rid of function keys by having uh, sort of pre-installed uh, uh, you know, shortcuts and things like that using? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it depends on what you mean by getting rid of it. Because we could do gestures to then press the key, say that, uh, say to the computer, the key is pressed. And then when you do the gesture again, the key is not pressed anymore. Mm -hmm. You could do that kind of thing, of course. Yeah. But then it, um, I mean, yeah, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to interact with the keyboard also, you could do some gestures and interact with the keyboard to, to in fact, simulate a, a hot key like, like this. So it depends on what you want to do exactly. But sure. again, you can do really, if you, if you can program it, you can do it. You can do it. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you.